we're edging closer to a, a sense of normality almost and of course one of those maybe first events for quite a while was the Cheltenham Cricket Festival that went very well with a, a tent and many many guests uh, visiting earlier this week. Um, what was that like for you and was it great to see the club reaching out to, to lots yeah. of people and having that sort of successful day? Yeah, you know, when I, when I first came to the club I was very much told this was a community football club and we do a lot of work in the community. Um, I was told about the cricket festival before I even joined and said that's a date for the diary. So, you know, big shout out really to, to Luke in, in my team and to, and to yourself, Richard, and, and Mark, um, Mark Kuzner, who really helped pull that together. And that was yesterday. And what a fantastic event, you know. I mean, Cheltenham College, first of all, is such a beautiful place. It's, um, it's a really nice place to be able to play cricket, I would imagine, if a professional cricketer. But for us to be able to have a marquee and just bring some of our sponsors there, sell tickets, I think we sold out within um, a couple of days of the, of the tickets coming to us, 260 people. Uh, we had our own bar and catering staff that we took over there. We had an auction, we had a raffle, and we had, luckily, the weather. So that was just a brilliant day out. Um, and I you know, really want to build on that and looking to implement some golf days in the future and just try and be more of a community club. You know, I know we already are a community club, but it's not just about what happens on a Saturday afternoon. It's about how can we work together with the community, not just the football supporters, uh, to make you know the, the whole town come together, really. The club's just got back to the joint highest level in its history in League One. Um, it's now really important that the club sustains itself at that level and, of course, kicks on to see what it can be, the best it can be. Yeah. You've, of course, worked at Premier League and Championship level at a high-end commercial setup in football clubs. Um, your experience is going to be huge in that. And do, do you see it really as a, a great opportunity for Cheltenham to try and improve commercially so that it can really push on and make Cheltenham a, a top, top club in, in English football in many ways? Yeah, absolutely. I think... You know, the fact we're in League One, um, even League Two to be honest, but the fact we're in League One and, you know, we're, we're, we're competing with, and you look at some of the names that are in the division this year that we're competing against, um, you know, little old Cheltenham is, um, is kind of the kind of tagline I've heard quite a lot recently. And I want to try and remove that because, you know, we're League One professional football outfit um, with some great players and a great manager and should be very very professional on and off the pitch so I think we shouldn't need any kind of um, geeing up to be the best that we can be we should already be that and I'm, you know, I'm looking to just try and put some structure in place to, to help us get there off the field um, but ultimately you know, it's down to Mr Michael and the players as to what they do on the pitch and obviously everything that they do and wins that all can help commercially with us to be able to go out and bring in more deals but I think you know, whether you're in the Premier League or the Championship or League One, you know, even in the Premier League with Norwich City, um, Norwich were a self-sustainable football club. So we were, we were tasked with trying to kind of stand on our own two feet and double our club controlled income within two years, uh, which we achieved, um, and now they've kicked on and taken it to a different level. So it's no different really here. I think the great thing about a football club like this and the way of the structure and the way the board works and you know the kind of shareholders is that every single penny that we generate which is what really excites me goes straight back into the pot and helps michael and the management his management staff reinvest and go out and be able to compete on the pitch so you know when i'm going out to people in the community when i'm going to be speaking my staff are going to be talking to people about sponsorships and partnerships and hospitality next season make no mistake about it every single penny that you spend at this football club really helps us on the field um, it all goes straight back in there's no shareholders taking profits out everything goes back into the playing side of the football club and that really excites me so yes whilst I've worked at higher football clubs um, and yes the money side of things is different actually it's still a football pitch it's still got four stands it's still got supporters it's also relative to the size of the football team and the size of the town it shouldn't be any different if your standards are Premier League it doesn't matter what division you're in you can still have off the field Premier League standards and that's something I'm really keen to do and I think I've mentioned it a few times in this interview but I've probably mentioned it uh, far too many times to, to the people that work at the football club but it is something I'm very passionate about, I'm very very passionate about the brand, I'm very passionate about making sure that we implement the right brand guidelines and that every touch point we have with supporters whether that be on social media, whether that be face to face, whether that be in the stadium, whether that be away, away grounds or a professional um, and we're proud to wear the badge and you know providing we all work together on and off the pitch then you know there's no reason why we can't be Premier League standards in League One. 
it is a, a challenge, I suppose, though, for you personally. In many ways, having worked at those levels, some of the size of the clubs we've worked at as well, to you know, to come to a, perhaps a smaller club that is really competing with some of the big boys in League One. Do you, in many ways, relish that challenge, though, of what is ahead? Because, like you said, the rewards are not just for you, but for, for everyone, really, if we can raise that money in terms of how it can promote the team. Absolutely, and that's what I mean. I think, you know, in, in the Premier League, you're awash with money in terms of some of the some of the partnership deals that you're looking at are in the millions and the millions. You know, share sponsorships can be anywhere between kind of £3 million and £10 million for a club of kind of minority size. Then you talk about the bigger clubs in the top six and it's it's off, it's on a different kind of um, stratosphere, really. So, yes, we're not talking about big numbers like that, but what we are doing is talking about um, numbers that would really make a difference uh, for a club of our level to help kick on in the, in the league. So... The partnership portfolio was already starting to come together, and that partnership portfolio portfolio put my words out, um, is going to be worth a certain amount of money, just like the one at Norwich was, just like the one at Preston was, and just like the one here will be. Um, and that is kind of your bread and butter. So the idea is we tie up people into long-term partnerships that work for them, that actually meet our clients' objectives, as opposed to just saying, here's a little bit of advertising, this is how much it costs, thank you very much. Nothing going forward will be off the shelf. Everything will be bespoke to the clients to try and meet our customers' objectives, to help them grow as a business. And I want the football club to be the heart of this town, to be the heart of the community. Moving forward, we'll be looking to introduce a business-to-business -business club, uh, an executive club, which is even people who don't even like football. It's just going to be a business club where the football club, we've got the facilities to hold, them, hold meetings, we've got player access, we've got managers, we've got physios, we can give exciting, interesting talks that probably you can't get at other business to business networking clubs. Um, so moving forward, there's loads of exciting things we can do to grow revenue on and off the field. But ultimately, you know, it's not about me, it's not about the working at a higher level, it's just about us being the best we can be. But I think the exciting thing for me is that it shouldn't be too hard to move us from where we are now um, in a kind of 18 month to three year project to a totally different level and I think that will be um, probably one of my biggest achievements so far in my career if we can move it from where we are now to where I want it to be I think it will change um, this football club for a lot for the, for the better. Some of these things will take time to develop and change like I say as part of, of the project but some of the things we're bringing in uh, sooner that fans will definitely recognise is a change to how they actually pay to get into the stadium isn't it? Yeah so one of the things um, you know, I was quite surprised that, and again, it's like any football club, there's, there's, there's little quirky things that go on at different football clubs, but I think one of the things that, um, that did surprise me a little bit was that, you know, our, our kind of fan base are, uh, are used to being able to pay cash on a, on a turnstile uh, to enter the ground on, on, on a match day, and it's just not efficient, you know, and I think if one thing, you know, I'm not saying there's any positives come out of the COVID situation, of course, but... You know, I can't remember the last time I actually used cash. Everything's on my card these days because we just got out of the habit of using cash. Um, so maybe now is the time to start looking at going cashless as a as what well, is the time to look at going cashless as a um, as a stadium. So we're not going to look at making huge changes overnight because I, I understand that people, you know, on a match day, some people will always come. They'll always think they can go to the turnstile and pay cash because that's what they've always done. We don't want to kind of move too far too soon, so there's going to be kind of a three-stage approach to this. Um, so the first stage will be that from the start of the season, you can still pay cash at, a t at the ticket office or a ticket office booth, which we'll have in the car park, to get your ticket to physically enter the stadium. Um, but there'll be no cash on the turnstile, so I, you know, I can't really get that message out enough to say we need to educate people to say, yes, you can still use cash when you come in the stadium at the moment for getting your burgers and your drinks and everything in the concourses, but there'll be no cash on the turnstile, it's just not efficient. Um, it's a cost to us, believe it or not, to process that and carry cash, and there's a security issue with that, obviously with lots of cash being carried around the building and what have you. Um, so we need to make sure that we, we kind of implement this in a phased approach. So phase one will be no cash at the turnstiles, but you'll still be able to come with cash on a match day and queue up and buy a ticket. Well, of course, what we'd really like you to do is just buy in advance. So if you buy in advance your ticket ahead of the match day, you're going to get a better price anyway. Um, and you can just collect it on the match day from one of the new ticket office booths that we'll have set up in the car park, which will just be a match day ticket office collection point, which will hopefully take pressure off the ticket office to be able to do day-to-day -day queries, sell away travel, um, future matches, that kind of thing. And the actual ticket office booths in the car park will take a lot of the traffic from people who would normally go to a cash turnstile and pay. 
So that's the first stage. Um, second stage will be introducing a few, a little bit more technology in terms of scanning barcodes and what have you to enter the stadium. Um, and then the third stage will be going completely cashless, but that's not for now. So I think the first thing, really important, let fans know straight away that we won't be able to pay on the turnstiles anymore. Um, we'll do lots and lots of marketing around that so people understand that. If you really do need to come on a, a match day with a last minute decision to come to the game, you'll still be able to use cash, but you won't be able to use it on turnstile. So you might need to just be aware that there might be a queue, and the best way to avoid that queue is to buy a ticket in advance and then collect it on match day.